Assalamu alaikum. So in today's video, we'll be talking about very important neuroradiological science and what those science can resemble in our day-to-day uh, -day life. I am Mohammed Raz, and this is your knowledge platform about the brain, spine, and beyond. So we'll start with the first one, which looks like an ice cream cone. Um, so this one, basically looking at this picture, uh, this MRI scan, you can see that there is a lesion here uh, around this area. This is a vestibular schwannoma, and it looks like a uh, ice cream cone because of this part of the tumor, which extends towards the brain stem uh, and towards the cerebellopontine angle, while there is the base of the cone, which the part of the tumor that resembles or uh, correlates with the intracanalicular part of the tumor. So this is usually an ice cream cone appearance, which is characteristic for the vestibular schwannoma or acoustic neuroma. But also we have a, another thing, which is a normal appearance of the um, of the middle ear ossicles. If you see that on an uh, on an axial CT scan, you can see that the bowl of the ice cream is formed basically here by the head of the medius, and the cone which is extending all the way down is formed by the body of the incus, with the tapering kind of conical end uh, formed by the short process which is pointing towards the uh, aditus and antrum. Again, you can see similar appearance here in this picture where you can see again the malleus and the incus. So this could be a normal appearance representing the middle ear uh, ossicles. Moving to the next one, which is this picture. This resembles a cord sign and the cord sign can be seen in um, some of the brain imaging in the form of thrombosed cortical veins. So if we look here at this uh, CT scan, you can see that something looks like a cord in the top here, um, which is basically a thrombosed cortical vein. But also, this can happen in a deeper venous structure. So it doesn't have to be cortical veins only, but it can happen also in the deeper structures. As you can see in this CT scan, you can see that there is a um, thrombosis and opacification within the um, middle, uh, within the deep venous uh, sinuses uh, of the brain. Moving to the next one, this is a delta sign. And the delta sign basically represents the um, thrombosis again on the contrast CT scan. And this resembles this uh, airplane, looks like a delta sign. Um, and this is the famous um, uh, supersonic uh, airplane. If we look here at this picture, this is the empty delta sign. So if you look here, this looks like a triangle with an empty space inside. On the right side here, you can see that's more uh, obvious where it looks like a triangle with the middle or inside this is empty. What's the rationale behind this one or what does that explain? It's because of the enhancement from the outside with a low attenuating center within this thrombosis. And basically the explanation is this enhancement is due to the rich dural um, venous collateral supply that goes around the thrombosed sinus, which basically the, that thrombosed sinus will produce this central attenuation sign uh, of, or this center of low attenuation within the CT scan. This is not uh, rep this is not representing one of those radiological signs, but I'm just showing this image because this looks like an intracerebral hemorrhage, but it looks abnormal. It looks patchy, and it's um, uh, with this edema around it. And when you see this picture, you have you, you should have a raised suspicion of having uh, some sort of sinus thrombosis or venous thrombosis, which might lead to venous. Um, uh, obstruction and subsequently uh, venous infarction and venous uh, hemorrhage like this one. Um, so I just wanted to show you this one to be mindful of this when you see um, uh, such a distribution or pattern of intracerebral hemorrhage. The next picture here is an arrow basically and this arrow is seen in the uh, MCA rupture when when we have an MCA aneurysm basically you can see here there is a subarachnoid hemorrhage on this CT scan it's extending all the way around the basal cistern but it's more obvious on the left sylvian fissure which looks basically like an arrow pointing out towards outside the skull and that's because likely to be a rupture of an MCA aneurysm which is a middle cerebral artery aneurysm but also this um, dense sign can be seen also, which might resemble a little bit uh, uh, an arrow, but it can be seen also as a dense cord, which is uh, happens into the MCA um, infarction, basically. So that's where you have an MCA stroke, and that can appear on the CT scan early on. 
Again, when you see here, that's again the CT scan where you can see this sort of arrow sign, but also on the CT angiogram, you can see that the MCA doesn't appear because there is no flow of contrast inside the MCA. Then what we see here is an, an MCA dot sign, which is again happens with a thrombosis or um, a stroke or an obstruction within the MCA, but this is kind of more um, of the branches of the MCA within the sylvian fissure, like an M2 segment or more, and this can appear like a dot, so they call it an MCA dot sign, or sometimes they call it sylvian fissure sign. Moving to the next one, which is this one. It basically looks like a hot nose, a hot nose or red nose. It's red, so it's hot. And this appears in this kind of picture, which is basically an increased perfusion towards the nasal region. Uh, and this is a nuclear imaging. This is a nuclear um, uh, medicine cerebral perfusion study. And that's basically happens in the case of brain death, where the absent or reduced flow into the internal carotid arteries led to the increased flow within the external carotid arteries and then subsequently increase of that perfusion towards the nasal region without much flow in the brain. The next sign is the tau sign. This tau sign can be seen in this um, abnormality. And this tau sign you can see on this MRI scan, it's here, but also in this one with, with a little bit of focus, you can see like the T-shaped uh, or tau sign. And this basically represents a persistent a trigeminal artery or persistent primitive uh, trigeminal artery and that appears on the sagittal uh, MRI scan where you have an angiogram or the sagittal MRI scan where you can see that sign. If we go here again you can see this obviously in this cerebral angiography you can see the the shape of the tau sign again in a persistent trigeminal artery and also similarly in this angiogram which is very obvious here um, with uh, in this cerebral angiography. The, just a little bit about this, so we have abnormal communication that can happen between the anterior and posterior circulation, basically between the anterior, internal carotid artery and the posterior circulation. And this can be in different places or at different levels. This can be the most common one of them is basically the persistent trigeminal artery, which is, as you can see here, is connecting between the cavernous part of the internal carotid artery with the distal part of the um, basilar artery. But also we have other ones like including the otic artery. The otic artery basically connects the petrous part of the internal carotid artery with another part of the basilar artery a little bit more proximal. And this happens through the internal uh, acoustic meatus and that's why it's taking the name of the otic um, um, otic artery or persistent otic artery. And then we have the persistent hypoglossal artery, which connects the distal cervical part of the internal carotid artery with the proximal basilar artery. And this happens through the hypoglossal canal. And then finally, we have the pro-atlantal uh, intersegmental artery or the persistent pro-atlantal artery, which is basically connects the distal cervical uh, part of the internal carotid artery with the uh, proximal part of the basilar artery via the foramen magnum. Then this picture is just basically to help you remember uh, those abnormal connections. And this one is basically a hot pepper. And hot pepper, H for hypoglossal artery, the O for otic artery, the T for trigeminal artery, and the P for pro-atlantal artery. So that can help you remember all of those persistent abnormal connection uh, with the uh, between the anterior and posterior circulation. Moving to the next one, this is a very well known and famous um, shape, which is the caput medosa. Uh, some people can call it the palm tree sign. And where can we see this in a brain imaging? This can be seen in like this abnormality on the MRI scan, as you can see, which is basically a de developmental venous anomaly. Moving to the next one, and this one is a wheel. This is a spoke wheel, um, and the spoke wheel can be seen in the brain imaging in such picture. You can see here on the left is an MRI scan. There is a big lesion which looks like having like those spoke wheel appearances, and that resembles basically a meningioma. So that's very characteristic for meningiomas. And as you can see on the uh, right side hand side is the uh, angiogram, which showing like the blush or the increased supply into the uh, meningioma. Again here, you can see uh, that similar appearance of the spoke wheel, not as evident as the other one, but again, that's a meningioma, which is extra axial, and with this kind of um, pattern within the meningioma, it looks like, you know, 
spooks going through it. The next one is the onion skin appearance, and that's that can be seen in uh, Ballo's uh, concentric sclerosis, like in this picture. You can see like an onion uh, peel appearance. Next one is an eccentric target sign. So this is um, a target, but it's eccentric. And in neuroradiology or in uh, brain imaging, you can see this one like here. You can see that there is a target here and there is a bit of nodule, which is uh, slightly eccentric. And similarly here, you can see a similar picture, which has some edema around it. And that basically is pathognomonic and in cases of cerebral toxoplasmosis. Um, that can be seen in a post-contrast MRI scan or sometimes in a CT scan, as basically we have the ring-enhancing lesion um, with an eccentrically, eccentrically uh, located um, neural nodule. And that it's believed that this neural nodule is basically an extension from the abscess itself with some inflamed blood vessels. If we look at this one or the sign, this is a reversal sign. And reversal is basically because there is a reversal of the attenuation uh, between the white and the gray matter. And we see this in such picture here in this uh, CT scan, where you can see the uh, inversion of the attenuation. We are supposed to see um, um, something is hyperdense and the other is hypodense. But here there's a, a difference where you can see the um, uh, hyperdensity inverted with the hypodensity of the between the white and gray matter and that happens basically when you have a, um, a diffuse um, injury to the brain. Next one is very interesting one uh, it's not neurosurgical but again it's very important to uh, appreciate this in brain imaging so that you understand that's not like a tumor but this is basically fingers and this is this is called the Dawson's fingers and that can be seen in patients with MS multiple sclerosis and that basically relates to the inflammatory changes within the white matter which is going around the um, perimedullary veins and that happens like perpendicular to the corpus callosum so if we look here at this imaging of the MRI scan on the uh, sagittal view, you can see the white matter inflammatory changes here, and that's all perpendicular to the corpus callosum, and that's just extension of this inflammation around the perimedullary veins. Again, similar picture, just to uh, complete the picture for you and to uh, see all of the different um, uh, shapes on the MRI scan. Then finally, the very famous uh, Mount Fuji sign, uh, which is very famous for neurosurgeons. Um, and basically, you can see this in this kind of picture. You can see the Mount Fuji on this CT scan, and that's likely a post-operative uh, CT scan. Sometimes you can see this post-traumatic, but we can see this a lot in post-operative um, um, cases where there is an obstruction or basically um, um, the, the air is being trapped inside, forming this shape. This sometimes, if the patient is deteriorating, as you all know, this can be an emergency that might require relief of that pressure or air pressure inside the brain. And again, it's the same shape of the Mount Fuji, and this is why it's taking that name from it. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, about the neuroradiological signs, and you find uh, those uh, pictures very easy to remember when you see this in uh, brain imaging. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you like those kind of videos and let me know also what kind of videos that you want to see on this channel. Please also share and subscribe because it helps us to, um, to be seen on YouTube and also follow us on the other social platforms so you can follow uh, us uh, about the updates about our courses that are uh, coming up. We just started, uh, we're starting our neurovascular course, which is the first cohort, which is starting on the 21st of August. So stay tuned and follow us and stay tuned for the next video.